Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Rocky from Rocky's War Room, uh, aka known as Matt. <laughs> uh, welcome to another review that I have, and this one here is a review of something I have uh, taken a liking to. Um, not only a liking to, but this is the the uh, rule book that I'm going to be using for my American War of Independence miniatures. And I got George Washington sitting there. And uh, these are the rules I decided to, to use, so I, I figured I'd go ahead and give it a quick review. Um, it is a, uh, it's a good rule set. It's, it's a good rule set. Um, I, I, I read it through a couple times. Um, it can be a little bit heavy, um, a heavy reader at first. Uh, of course, for me, an easy game like Black Powder was, uh, you know, a little daunting at first. But once you get into the key elements of the game and stuff like that, it has, it, it really runs pretty simple. Um, I, I'm comparing it to Black Powder because that's what I've played before in the past. Uh, Black Powder is uh, a great game, uh, but I would consider Land of the Free Black Powder Plus. It has kind of the same concepts, except in this one here, you can actually, as long as you're within the sphere of influence, just like in Black Powder, of one of your field commanders or your group commanders uh, within their radius, which depends on their rating, uh, you can activate that unit. Uh, there's no random, you know, die roll to see if they do something or not. Um, but that's just an example. So uh, this game kind of gives you more of a, oh, a heavier command and control element. Um, it uses a lot more tokens rather than casualties. Um, you have to fire and reload, that, those sort of things, as far as your orders. So, I mean, a combat order would be to fire and a maneuver order would be to reload your weapon. So, and depending on the size of your unit, depends on how many of those maneuver tokens that you get for that unit. So, but that's just a little, a few examples where it's heavier in the rules. But uh, back to the rules, uh, as you can see, it's got a little wear on it already. <laughs> but it's a nice hardback book. Uh, it's from Osprey Publishing, as you can see. It's a little explanation. Uh, this, th these rule books, as you can see, is War Game Rules from North America from 1754 to 1815. That means it's it's more period specific. Spe uh, I can't even say that word. Specific, um, <clears throat> and I like those type of games where they're more period uh, specific because you don't get those extra added rules added in. Um, with you know, of course, black powder. You buy the supplements and it, and it focuses on a specific period, but it still has those same rules. It's just this adds a little bit to it, but it's a nice glossy cover, or not glossy, but kind of matte. But a nice picture on the front. I do like this picture. And it's, the rules are by Joe Crone. And they cover from the uh, French and Indian War, American War of Independence, up to the War of 1812. So uh, that's a pretty big range when you really think about it. But uh, if you open the book, nice, nice binding, nice glossy pages. And as you can see, I've highlighted in it <laughs> so I can find rules quickly. Um, I'd say uh, this game here, uh, it requires a force organization. Um, you don't, of course, you don't really have to use it. It's just that's what they recommend based on their play testing. But uh, you need one overall force commander and two group commanders. And they don't cost any points. It's all, obviously, they have a point system, but you can take whatever you want. It's, it's up, up to the people, up to the players. But each one of these group commanders has to have two elements in it. And, and, and an element... <clears throat> they call regiments elements uh, in this game. And that might be off-putting because uh, it would might feel a little bit more like a game. Um, but uh, they call it an element because it can represent <clears throat> anything. Um, a file, a patrol, a section, a platoon, a company, a battalion, a regiment, brigade, or a division. I mean, it tells you how many men... The composing of units and what is the commander so calling them elements is just an overall narrowed down uh, more broad term to use to represent any size game you really want to play 
So it's more of making it more generic than it is anything else. And I can see how that can be put off-putting to some people that, you know, that that don't like that sort of thing, calling them elements. But that's kind of why they do it. Um, I know I've heard uh, quite a few people say that about this game where they don't like the generic terms like Force Commander, Group Commander, but let's be honest, we <laughs> those are just generic terms to describe your your leaders, you know, and your uh, your troops. But also another aspect of this game that I've noticed uh, is their unique tables. And in their tables, um, you have artillery, cavalry, and infantry. That's it. Three ch three charts. Uh, they give you the weapons: musket, smoothbore, rifled. Um, what the ranges are, and you can add you add five points and how many points they are based on their size. There's four different sides: a tiny, small, medium, or large. And a tiny element's about one to three stands with two to six miniatures. So, <clears throat> the example they give in the picture there: six guys. And as you can see, a small element, four to twelve miniatures, mounted on one to three stands. A medium element can represent 6 to 18 miniatures mounted anywhere on, from 3 to 6 stands. Now that's, uh, <clears throat> that's it. and a large element obviously is 5 to 7 stands representing about 10 to 30 miniatures. It's all how you want, what, however you want to base them. Um, what they mean by stands is either the base that they're on or, let me see if I can get these guys over here. There's one stand, two stands, <clears throat> and three stands. So three stands, this would be a small unit. If you add just one more stand, which would be three to six elements, three to six miniature, or uh, <clears throat> three to six stands, about four stands, if I can get it to stay on the stand here. I used uh, these magnets and they're not working all that great. <laughs> I'm gonna have to switch them out. But this right here would represent a medium unit, medium element, which is your standard size in the game um, for the most part. <clears throat> and a medium element has a different discipline has three discipline, which is their health basically, and all the same morale. And based on how, how big of your unit is, is based on how many combat and maneuver tokens they're going to get, and how many points they are, and how many action dice. So it's pretty simple um, when you really look at it. Um, building your units is not that hard. So that's one thing that I that appeals to me about this. Um, <clears throat> Let me move these fellas out of the way here. <clears throat> so, another thing I like about this game um, is it's not just your units. When, I mean, just like in Black Powder, they have a uh, you know a threat range of 12 inches. Uh, the same thing with these. If they get within 12 inches, they're going to act on their own. You know, same same type of deal. But what I like about this game, another aspect I like about this game is it's very familiar to Black Powder. So if you've played Black Powder, which is, you know, uh, pretty much it seems like a staple game for a lot of people, uh, you should be able to pick this game up really easily. So, and you know, an, uh, one of the different things about this game too is... Um, as far as like, oh, black powder is more focused on formations. This game is not focused on formations. Um, it's got maybe five and one of them is the artillery, like limbered or unlimbered. And they considered open order a war band, the same thing. March column, Indian file. Um, and then they have single stand elements uh, you got battle line, you got open order, you got march column, and you got single stand elements and limbered and unlimbered artillery. Pretty simple. And if anybody's opened the Black Powder book, 
they have several formations. Doesn't necessarily mean that they all can use them based on their book, but they're not so focused on that. And movement is pretty easy. Uh, a movement is you spend one maneuver token, you move six inches or three inches, you spend another one, you move another three inches. If you want to move in for a charge, it's six inches, but you stop halfway through and you have um, certain things that you could do. Um, you move halfway, you ask your opponent if he would like to react to the charge, and he says yes or no. So he can do one of several things. So there's a more of a command and control aspect to this game, uh, more flavor, more options that you can do with your units. And I have played a couple practice rounds of the melee combat because it actually was... It was probably the... I'd have to say it was the hardest thing to understand why they would do certain things or they had th certain things available. But uh, the way they have it in the book, they cover every situation. And I've played maybe seven or eight different melee combats for different situations. And it all makes sense. It's one of those type of games you got to play to uh, kind of understand why they do what they do. So, but uh, overall, it's really neat. Um, they have generic, of course, they have generic scenarios that you can use for the game. Or you can do the historical, as they call them, refights. Um, tells you how many men per element that you're using and gives you a nice little map and, uh, where everybody comes from and kind of your layout, just like you ha would normally have. And like, here's the battle of Ticonderoga, uh, during the French and Indian war, um, battle of Santa Foy. And then the American revolution ones, they have second battle of Trenton <clears throat> and they give you all the forces that were there. That's another thing I like about this is you have an attacker, you have a defender, and they give you every one that was there, every unit, every regiment that was there. So uh, at that specific battle. And these are, as you can see, there's a lot of units represented in this game. And then they have something. If you want to play the actual battle size on some of these, they have uh, <clears throat> on the big battles, they have extra the main body. So you don't have to, it says not used in the refight, but provided for complements for larger games. So you can play huge games with massive amounts. Like Brandywine, Germantown, Princeton. That's where I'll be starting. Um, uh, I will be starting at in Princeton, more than likely. The first battle that I'm going to fight. Um, the American forces, as you can see, there's a long list here of each regiment that was there. Same with the British. So... Really neat book, and uh, they also have some War of 1812. Um, they have quite a few for the Guilford Courthouse, cow pens, you know, for the American Revolution, and the Northwest Indian War. You just keep going, War of 1812. So this thing, this book is Battle of New Orleans. This book is full of really awesome content. And in the back, quick reference charts, those are always great. They have advanced rules with uh, extra uh, added-on rules that you can give your commanders and certain units. Uh, same here. And then they have an order of battle, how things work. They name all the orders over here that you can do. Infantry orders, cavalry orders, artillery orders that you can give. That's always good to have. Of course, this, this game uses D6. Which is good, because we all have those. <laughs> and then uh, they give you a quick reference chart as far as your force commander and two group commanders. So you can write them down and write what their command points each turn. So, <clears throat> and your elements on the table. So they have good reference here. Uh, the way it works, though, at the beginning of a turn, uh, each turn, you're going to roll up command points for each one of your commanders. And based on their rating, um, you'll roll up the force commander, the whole overall force commander's uh, rating. And based on his rating, is based on how many command points he's going to have, plus you do a d6 roll for initiative to, to see who, you know, gets to be the active player first. And when you're 
when the turn sequence goes, it's not a you go, I go game. It's the active player will activate one group fully, like four regiments in that one group. He will activate that whole group, and then the next player will become the uh, active player, and he will do a no whole group, and then it'll go back and forth until all groups have been satisfied. And then, of course, the leaders will always move last. So if he's a high-rated leader, he'll move 18 inches. If he's a low-rated low rated leader, he'll move 12. But that's to position them where all their units will be in their sphere of influence so they can be activated. So that's a unique thing. That's a, uh, I guess, very short review. Uh, so I could get it out of my head and tell somebody. <laughs> Uh, of uh, Land of the Free. I'm I'm very impressed. Um, I can see that there are going to be a couple things that I'm probably going to house rule that, you know, are not necessary. Or if they are necessary, I don't know, 100%. We'll use them for a little while, but I think I'm going to eventually have to house rule a couple things. No big deal. These games are designed that. It's just a set of rules to start with. It's always been told to me. It's a set of rules to start with. You can take them any way you want. And you can do with them whatever you want, just like any rule set. It's not a set in stone set of rules. you got to follow the book. And that's what makes this fun. That's what makes this hobby fun. And uh, I'm really impressed with Land of the Free. Joe Crone did a great job. I'm glad Osprey Publishing published it. Um, I found this by accident. Um, it was actually, <laughs> it was online, and you could download it, uh, as a PDF. I think it was from Osprey, but oh no, 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 it wasn't. I was looking up for books on American Revolution, and when you Google it, <laughs> uh, it pops up, you know, books. And I looked at this and I go, what in the heck is that? And uh, I found it and it was on Osprey and I downloaded it um, and started reading it and I immediately had to buy the book. So uh, I was jostling between Black Powder um, and their rebellion uh supplement uh lane to the free and um muskets and tomahawks and muskets and tomahawks is a great game um but it's more skirmish based and i want something more grand tactical and i found that i like the bigger large scale battles that i do the skirmishes per se but that's just personal choice um so but anyway, that's all I have for you guys. I appreciate you watching this video. Uh, if you made it here, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, please like, subscribe to my channel, tell a friend, leave me some comments. Any comments, all comments are welcome. I don't care how good or bad they are. But uh, that's all I have for you. So from me to you, ta-ta!